Hello, everyone. Thanks, Marty, and the, everyone on the LNO team for hosting the Science Council meeting. I'm Jen Rogers, and I'm happy to be here representing the Sevieta LTR, which is located at the confluence of the traditional homelands of the indigenous peoples of central New Mexico, including Pueblo, Navajo, Apache, and their ancestors. And I wanted to mention that Scott Collins from our site is also here at the Science Council meeting this year. Our biggest recent site news is completion of our virtual NSF midterm site review, which ended up being very interactive and also really insightful. It went really well. And like many other virtual site reviews, we made videos to feature how things look from the ground. This was a unique collaborative effort with the science communication team of the University of New Mexico's NSF advanced program. And the videos are now posted on YouTube and also collected at the link below. In addition, over the summer, we launched a brand new website. And if you have a chance to interact with it, we would love any feedback you have as we continue to refine it. Finally, I want to mention that we've been really ramping up our diversity, equity, and inclusion activities over the past year. And we'd be happy to share our progress on that front with anyone who's interested. As a reminder, Reminder of our theme, the current SEV LTR program addresses the central question, how do changes in climate mean and variance inter interactively and independently affect the dynamics of dry land ecosystems and the transitions among them? If we consider future climate scenarios, there are two key components of changes in the distribution of climate variables to consider change in the average or mean, which has been the focus of most research, but also change in the variance. And because we work in dry lands, drought indices are an important climate variable um, to consider. There you go. Sev work is located in a hot spot of dual changes in the mean and variance of drought. These maps come from work by Scott Collins and Greg Maurer and show 100 years of change in the SPI drought index. They highlight how the ecosystems we study can help serve as canaries in the coal mine for other regions that are only just beginning to experience the combination of these dual changes in climate. Because of the central focus of our program, the human environment interactions we consider relate most strongly to anthropogenic climate change. So we'll present two case studies that address extremes and legacies in this context. In the winter of 2011, the Sevieta experienced a 50 to 100 year severe freeze event with temperatures as low as negative 31 degrees C, causing dieback in the canopies of our dominant shrub, creosote bush, throughout central New Mexico. Data from the Sevieta captured the response of these populations at the northern range limit of the species, which you can see here on this map in green. The middle graphic shows that canopy loss was greatest in areas of highest shrub density, a form of negative density dependence. But despite predictions to the contrary, this extreme freeze event ca caused almost zero mortality. It changed the shrub canopy cover for multiple years of recovery. Thus, we, we saw an impact on function, but no major permanent ecosystem transition was caused by this extreme event. During the last 20 years, the SEV has been the site of numerous manipulative experiments that bear on the legacies of different aspects of climate change. One such study is the Pinion Juniper Rainfall Experiment, which began in 2006. This experiment, led by Will Pachman, imposed severe drought, as well as persistent increases in water availability using rainout exclusions and irrigation applied to large 40 meter by 40 meter plots. Because these treatments are long-term, they have potential to create strong antecedent or legacy effects in water inputs. These panels show daily sap flux for pinion pine on the top and juniper trees on the bottom and reveal a legacy effect of the long-term watering treatments. In order to detect a legacy effect, Will imposed a watering treatment here in the right-hand panel in blue that brought all the plants to equivalently high levels of water availability in order to swamp the plot's antecedent differences in soil moisture and then measure their functional response under similar water conditions. This treatment was created by the combined effects of for what for us was a huge 88 millimeter natural storm 
plus 50 millimeters of additional water that was added through drip irrigation around each target tree. And what this experiment cleverly revealed was a persistent legacy effect of past drought treatment on pinion pine, in which trees with a drought legacy, those are the ones shown in red colors, could not increase sap flow to the same magnitude as the trees that had a legacy of irrigation shown in blue, even when um, all the trees were given lots of water. However, in contrast to pinion, there was no legacy effect of these antecedent drought conditions on juniper. So where this fits within the SEV conceptual framework is under question five from our proposal. And we are continuing to examine how extreme events alter the sensitivities of individuals, populations, communities, and ecosystems to ongoing background climate change by creating legacy effects. Thank you.